There you go. The special Henry Lee Lucas, man. What's the guy's name? Billy Lee Davis. Yeah, I go, what? I actually go, thank you, email. I said, <laughs> Russ was brutal. <laughs> Terrible to you. Yeah, but to you. You got an email from Billy D. Lucas? Yeah. But, <laughs> Davis. Well, yeah, no, but thanks for getting it on there anyway. Listen, it kickles with anything. Keep on calling me. Thank you. You were walking around singing it all night last night around this office. Because of this. Want him get a? Want to get him up here and sing it live? No. Oh yes. No. Yes. Leave the guy alone. What kind of instruments does he have in this? Does he need a guitar and a goat? <laughs> There's a guitar in there. You should probably just do it with a the guitar. There's the drums. I don't hear a steel guitar. It's a bass. Yeah. Is there a steel guitar? Real subtle. What? Steel guitar? Steel guitar. It's might, might just be strumming rhythm. Right. It's a steel guitar unless you're just pounding it. <laughs> Sing that song, bitch. She wrote, call me. My new favorite song, no. F M and M. It's very hard traditional country. I don't care what it is. You like it? That's not that's that's swinging. <laughs> if you get him up here, he's got to wear like the uh, the gotta real dress sparkly him up like big you know, tanks. The, you know the sparkly jacket, you know, with wagon wheels on it. Yeah. Dress him up like uh, uh, cowboy weaver, yeah. cowboy weaver, or, or Porter Buck. Wagner. Por oh, Porter Wagner. Yeah, something with glitter on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fresh fringe and glitter. Yeah. Mm hmm And a neckerchief. <laughs> Boots. Yeah. He'll have those. Wranglers. Mm hmm Make him walk around standing like this. <laughs> <laughs> the big text thing. <laughs> yes, I said. Poor guy. Hey, he sent the CD. Yes, he knew he better. Yes, he yeah. did. He certainly did. He even said that in the email. He goes, I knew Russ was going to, if he listened to it, he would destroy it. There's no reason to destroy this song. It's just. He put pigs wheeling behind this. This has got a fuse We're already on it. She watched it. She it's funny as the wolf's going to start getting requests for this. <laughs> this guy's career is going to zoom. Yeah. What's our number? 214-787-1995. Yeah. What's the guy's name? Which one? I don't know who's on. This this guy that's singing. Oh, Billy oh. Lee Davis. Wish he'd pick a name and stick with it. <laughs> he did. <laughs> Let's see what website. I remember him saying he could buy it on Amazon, but I don't think he's got a website himself. And let me see. No, oh, here it is right here. He does. BillyLeeDavis.com. There. Call a wolf and request it. <laughs> They'll have a heart attack. Yeah. Who is it? God, who the people are called in? Call the RCA. Call the RCA. Find out who this is. <laughs> label is this on? It's probably the independent here locally. It is on... Manufactured by Midwest Disc for Billy Lee Davis. Do you see a label on that? Nope. Look on the CD. 
That's, it don't matter. There won't be a national label. There won't be a label that the wolf has access to. <laughs> Maybe they can wear one off his side. They could do that. Does, does the disc you have have his picture on the cover? Have you seen this guy? Yeah, it's on the CD right oh, okay. Here. okay. Yeah. He's your typical redneck hayseed guy. Yeah. Hat. Overpressed uh, shirt. Mm -hmm. Wranglers up to the uh, past his belly button. Why do they always? What is it with the with the hayseeds that get the shirts that are too big? Because look at that, that's too big. And any, anytime you go to a redneck kicker bar, they're all wearing the shirts that are too big that are puffy in the back. It's just, it's just is that the storage? It's the no <laughs> storage. It's the fashion, and they, they get pressed. They stand out like that because they're heavy starch. Well, why heavy starch? Why not just wash it and you it's, know? It's just the fashion. They press the jeans. Yeah. Like I now, eat. do they still do the uh, the jeans to where they're so pressed you can do the deli meat? Cut? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Got to have that crease. Where they have a big white line right down the front. I'm impressed. And, and what's the, the reason between behind that? It's just the fashion. It's is just it? they want to look sharp and pressed. Have you seen them, Dan? Oh, yeah. Do they still sew the seam into the front? Sew so the crease. Have you seen those? No. They, uh, my wife likes the Western jeans. Some of the guys' jeans have the seam sewn into the front. So it'll... so it'll Regardless of what you do, it's always there. It's always going to be sharp. In oh. the sharp crease in the front. Not the seam. The crease is sewn into the Never front. seen that. No. Mm -hmm. Normally, extra heavy starch does that in a couple of washings. You get the white line. <laughs> it's just the fashion. I got it. Why I, do, why do, you know, like people... It just doesn't make any sense. Why? I mean, you know, why not take all your... your Either the balloon pants or your, parachute Your shirts and cover them with macrame. You know, it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> now you know they're going to do that. Those, some of the... Some of the uh, D ten dancing teams do have little things sewn on the shirts that match. The what do they have? Oh, just the sparkles. Macaroni? No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, the sparkles and things. But they're in the same pattern. They're very expensive. Dancing teams like square dancing? Um, husband and wife teams, boyfriend and girlfriend, they dress alike and they dance. Oh, you mean when they're you know, like the line dancing? When they're country dancing. When they're competing on the comp 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 on TNN? Yes. Or it's not Nashville anymore. Is it? I don't know. They do this thing. No, they don't do that. <laughs> With the thumbs in the pants and arms out. No. And they, they're doing this like I got the diarrhea. You no, know, that's... I got to get to the bathroom. <laughs> I'm very good at not going to hold it. <laughs> I'm very intricate dancing, but... Not my that's not... In, in well, some of it is very complicated. Yeah, it is. Some of it. The, the competitions are. I can... Well, they got to be careful, because one wrong move, he's going to snap her neck. Oh, I can slice her <laughs> in half of those effing pants. <laughs> You were doing that all day yesterday after the show, walking around the hall. I love it. <laughs> she wrote, call me. How could you not love that? You can't. You love it. God, you're on the air. Hey, Russ. Yes. I got a, I emailed you with a story on Ludwig. On who? Ludwig. I didn't get it. Craig, well, I had talked to my uncle about him being in a uh, gay bar. Ludwig? Yeah. He wasn't in no gay bar. I swear. I talked to my uncle last night. He was in, uh, it was at Harley Fest in Milwaukee. He met with my uncle. He's good friends with him. Yeah. They uh, traveled. Oh, he met him up the road. Hold on a second. Dan, and, uh, hold on. Dan. Yes, sir. Hunt down the Ludwig, would you? Craig? Okay. Yeah. All right. Go ahead. So, and, uh, now, who saw him in the gay bar? Well, they're walking down the street. They parked and walked down the street, and Ludwig had, had to use the bathroom. So they just dove off in the first bar they seen. All right, so he didn't know it was a gay bar. No. Oh. He went into the bathroom, and this guy's checking him out the whole time he's going to the bathroom. Oh, jeez. <laughs> and my uncle's sitting at the bar drinking a beer thinking, what if we got into? And you know how sensitive Ludwig is. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, he told my uncle, man, if he told anybody, he'd kill him. But, uh, so here you are on the radio. <laughs> yeah. That's all right. What anyway, was, uh, uh, what city were they in? I believe it was Milwaukee. All right. But uh, he went back out to the bar and he said, this guy's checking me out in the bathroom. And there was another guy just winking and smiling at him across the, across the way. And, uh, yeah, he'd be quite a catch <laughs> in a gay bar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, my uncle finally told me, he said, man, this is a gay bar. And, man, they 
they were like instantly gone out of there. But well, you like, know what? Really, seriously, that if, is it him? All right, we gotta go. Hold on, you got him. Is that him? Yeah, he's on the hot. Craig. Yes, sir. <laughs> you big bag. <laughs> What were you doing in a gay bar in Wisconsin? A gay? I got to be honest, there aren't any in Wisconsin, so maybe it's a different state, Russ. Wait a minute. Where's Milwaukee? Wisconsin. Milwaukee is southern Milwaukee. Yeah, southern Wisconsin. Yes. Were yeah. you in, Were you in a gay bar anytime recently? I was in a strip joint a couple weeks ago. Were you in a gay bar anywhere? No, no, can't. You, uh, you didn't can't go. Take, can't take credit for that one, Russ. You didn't accidentally go into a gay bar to use the bathroom. No, can't take credit for that one. <clears throat> I'd like to help you out, but I can't. <laughs> Why were you were you in the stall next to me or what? <laughs> yeah, I kept sticking it through the hole and you wouldn't bite. <laughs> Gee, there you go. I felt I just spewed water. I felt, <laughs> I felt jilted. I just kept you know sticking it in. I'd pull it out, dress it up, stick it back through the hole. <laughs> where, where are you getting your info there? Right? I, some I guy so. called and said that you weren't some Harley rally thing in uh, Milwaukee and you had to go whiz and accidentally ducked into a gay bar. Oh, that wasn't a couple weeks ago. That was about three years ago. Oh. Hmm. But you oh. still did it then, right? Oh, sure. Oh, okay. sure. <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> How was it? Uh, I've been there long enough to check it out. Man, you must have been a, the, the literally the cock of the walk. <laughs> when uh, when you, when you walk in and you see them all holding hands in there, I just kind of uh, spun around and headed the other way. <laughs> you could have sat down and you could have had dr free drinks all night. <laughs> no, I pass on that, Russ. Russ, what the the guy is still on line five. He said it wasn't recent; it was a few years ago. Yeah, Craig just said. That. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah it was two years ago. Yeah, I think it was at the 75th anniversary, as a matter of fact, uh, 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 the Harley thing in there, the 95th or something like that. Yeah, it must have been 95th because 100, uh, 100 anniversary coming is coming up, up next. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, it was the 95th then. Yeah. <sighs> Actually, that's where all my buddies live in Milwaukee, too. So yeah. I'll, I'll, they're coming in next weekend, so I'll see if any of them are fags or not. So <laughs> I'll check it out for you. If there are, I'll, I'll get, have them give you a call. Do you still have your bike? Yes, sir. I got a Harley now. We need to go ride. Well... <laughs> I don't know, Russ. Why? I, I just can't picture you riding around on a bike. Uh, we rode uh, for your uh, charity turkey thing a couple of years ago. Yeah, you were the one way back there, weren't you? I know. I stayed up, and I didn't drop it. Uh-huh. Yeah, but I, I, I just can't picture you on that. But I, I'd love to go for a ride with the rest if you want to you want to learn how to ride. Uh, okay. I've been riding yeah. for a couple of years. i got a couple spots we can stop and check out. Parts and pieces and things. Okay. Make sure everything's running okay with you. What are you doing now with it? Uh, are you are you doing anything for the stars now? Yeah, I'm going to go in. As a matter of fact, we're going to get something done next week. What are you going to uh, do? Uh, what I'd like to do is uh, I would like to work with our young kids, um, our draft picks, kids that we've just drafted, and be able to uh, go and watch them play and be able to talk to them a little bit after, after I watch them play for a few games and give them a couple little points or direction that they need to do that's going to get them here and that's going to keep them here because I just have felt over the last few years uh, our, our our upbringing of our youth hasn't really helped us that much in the past. It seems like we've always got to go out and uh, our owner and everybody has to spend a lot of money on uh, free agents, you know, every summer. And so uh, in the past that I noticed when I was in Montreal, we there was a lot of time and effort and work put into the into the young kids in the program that were coming. Dan, up. you want to ask him to play in your golf thing? And, uh, uh, like us, we can uh, if he's in town, the next one. I'm not sure where the next one's going to be. I think we need to spend yeah. a little more time, yeah. a little more, uh, put some more effort into those kids uh, when they they are a year or two older that they can get here and they can stay here, so we don't have to lose them. And, mm -hmm. and hopefully, you don't got to go out and spend sixty million dollars every summer like uh, like we do. But it's a luxury that we have. But I think we need. Is that to, what it costs uh, for recruitment? Well, I mean, if you look at it when they, you know, just for example, I mean, you look at uh, Bill Guerin's contract, I think he got somewhere around $9 million for four or five years, and then they went and got uh, Scott Young at uh, two or three years at $3.5 million, and, uh, you know, and along with a couple more guys, so you got to, you know, you figure that that's not, that's not what they're spending per year, but that's what they're spending over the length of their contracts. So, you know, if you, if you put some more time and effort into... Uh, I'd be more apt to give hockey players that kind of money because they get out there and they get their asses whooped, and they very seldom yeah. complain. And I don't know why. Well, I, you know, I think it's the way that that hockey players are brought up. I think you're you're brought up with the idea that you don't you don't get hurt because when you're hurt, 
uh, you have to miss a game. And when you miss a game, there's somebody standing right behind you in line that wants to get in and take your spot. So it's, not, it's not being courageous. It's being paranoid. Well, it's, it's, I think it's a little bit of both. I, I just always a, thought it was like a love for the game. You went out there. and I mean, there were there were seasons uh, when you guys were playing. I don't know who it was, but he got hurt. And you had, the bone was actually sticking out of his leg, and he was still on the ice. I think he used well, it as I mean, a stick. I, I, like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it was sticking out of his leg or where it was sticking out of it. Was, you know, he spent too much time. I don't know. Bar. I think it's just a perception that uh, a hockey player has, and you know, I think if you probably talk to other athletes, they'll probably tell you that uh, you know they feel the same way about their sports. So I can only speak for ours, and I know that uh, it just seems to be kind. Of, it, it's more of a, a when you use the word team, it's it's a team sport. There's not you never very seldom see any showboating, and if somebody scores. You know, it's like when Craig accidentally scored uh, in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. First of all, the look on his face. <laughs> and then they that went in. They, they interviewed him later, and he gave credit to somebody else. Yeah. Well, it wasn't me. Because, you know, I, I think that's probably another thing, that any kind of athlete that you talk to in our sport, I mean, even when you talk to a guy like Mike Madonna or a uh, player, Darian Hatcher, guys like that, they'll be the first ones to give credit to their line mates. And I think it's just, uh, like you said, it, it is a team, and I think we've all... I have a guest question for you. Uh, let me grab this guy on four and do it. Go ahead, Dan. Hey, Russ. Hey, I'm not trying to make light of this cat situation, but would it be such a big deal if it were a rat or a squirrel or a ferret or something? Yes. It would be just as big of a deal? You're missing the point. What's the point? You're torturing an animal for enjoyment. But I just find it hard to I believe just explained it. it to you. Well, if it was a we're rat. We're clear, right? I'm I just not... taught you something. Oh, you You're did. welcome. You're right. Fine. Tough ass question. I don't care what it is. Really. The only two things I don't care what you do with are bugs and X's. I don't care. <laughs> There's got to be something wrong in your brain if you think it's okay to torture any animal. I didn't even like it when I was a kid. My brother would do stuff with frogs. It's just it's just one of those things. I mean, if you're going to kill it and eat it, that's fine. You're doing it for a reason. But to whack something around just for the sheer enjoyment, that's sick. And the fact that you have to call an ass that makes you a jackass. What kind of question was that? I don't, I don't know. All right, who's the guest? Uh, Def Leppard will be in town next week. I think Wednesday. They're going to be at the Hard Rock promoting some new stuff. So they're going to be in town. They could be in studio. I thought they were mad at me. Oh, they probably don't remember that. They remembered it enough to call and bitch last time. Yeah, but we're at a different station now. They're not going to remember anything about the one-armed drummer jokes or anything. I didn't make any one-armed drummer didn't, jokes. Didn't make any jokes. I forget. Right. Hold on. What were they pissed about? We were promoting their. Uh, I was playing their new album. We were over at the Eagle. Mm -hmm. I forget the name of the album. I think it's Euphoria or something like that. I could be wrong. It was a good album. I you would, I would sit at the computer, and I very seldom do this. I find one one or two songs on an album, and that's it. I couldn't mm -hmm. care less about the other tracks. I'd sit at the computer and just let the whole thing track while I was working. I don't think I kissed their ass. That's what it was. I don't know. We didn't make any one art. That's too easy. Yeah. Hmm. Mm. All I remember is Greg called us in after the show. Well, you upset Def Leppard. And? <laughs> <laughs> What's going to happen now? Well, it was up to you. What did I say? Uh, they didn't really say. All right, but they were mad. Yes. Did you hear anything I said? No. Is John De La Rosa in here someplace? <laughs> <laughs> I remember we sat around afterwards trying to figure out what it could have been we, that, that happened that made them angry. But... I'm still trying to think. It wasn't the album because I didn't bag on that. Mm. All right, Def Leppard in the studio. Are they going to play? I don't know. They can do acoustic. I heard one of their acoustic things. What they do. I think they did a whole acoustic, did like an unplugged, I'm not sure, but I think it was an unplugged thing for MTV. I heard a version of uh, Pour Some Sugar on Me. It's cool. 
Yes, if they'll play acoustically, they can come in. Okay. If not, I'm busy. <laughs> okay. What's the deal on uh, Jennifer Love Hewitt? She calling tomorrow or not? Uh, is the, at this point, it's going to be sometime between three thirty and four o'clock tomorrow. That's fine. It just depends on what time she gets done with the MTV thing. She's do, uh, recording a segment with them. And then when she's done with that, she'll be in the limo. And as soon as she gets in the limo, she's supposed to call. Well, fine. They're the ones that called us. I didn't ask to have her on. Mm-hmm. Well, but she does have, you know, the obligation that she has to fulfill at MTV and all that. So. Okay. Screw it. We can't get her. We got this in the back. Uh, we got this in our back pocket. Yeah. She wrote call. <laughs> I think he's available. You know this uh, Harley Lee Davidson guy can come up and sing whatever. Billy Lee Davis. Well, he I like riddles this. all through this thing, doesn't he? Yeah. I like this song, and I don't know why. I'm ashamed to embarrass. Uh, I'm embarrassed to admit it. I'm ashamed. <laughs> I was singing it out in the hall during one of the breaks. She wrote, call me. Yeah, we know. You know what that is? Uh-uh. That's a hit. I was going to say mosquito repellent. But, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but okay. Go ahead, you're on the air. Make it stop! Turn it off! Oh, no. No, no, no. That did you, sir? Hello. Hey. Yeah. Why? Oh, what's up with Howard Stern and the rerun? I don't know. Why don't you call him? I can't get a hold of him. What's the number? I don't know. Why don't you call him? I don't know the number. That's why I'm What did information tell you when you asked them? Huh? That's what I thought. I've been screening most of those. <laughs> Why do they? All right. Jackasses, dildos, dumbass. This is not information. If you can't figure it out on your own, don't call Dan and waste his time. Open up a phone book. Break down. Call 411. Ask them. Call Bob McNeil. 972-716-7800. It'll forward to his office. We don't know. And better yet, we don't care. And this continues every single day, doesn't it? Yes. Hundreds and hundreds of them every day. Calls about other shows on the station. Ads they've heard. Don't ask about other shows on this station. Don't even ask about this show on this station. If you don't like another show, don't worry about it. It'll probably be gone. It's about time for changing of the tards. (laughs) (laughs) Huge. <laughs> Thank you. Good night. Uh-huh. <laughs> I have no power here. I can do nothing. I know absolutely nothing. I have no information that's valuable to you in any form or fashion. Never, ever, ever call us. If it continues, I'll have these phone lines taken out. <laughs> Russ, it's a talk show, man. We're supposed to talk to him from time to time. Okay. <laughs> yes, what is it? <laughs> Someone needs to ask you what the number of the dominoes is. Why? Uh... Because Russ probably does. Nobody say anything. I mean, we're getting an unlisted phone number. <laughs> we'll just talk to the ones that get in by luck. We, 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 have, give the number to we have the phone number changed, and we only give it out to people that go through some type of IQ test. You have to take some kind of test, or you win in a contest. You win the phone number, and then you can call. Well, 
they had to have the phone in first. Yeah, yeah. How would they win the contest? I don't know. I'll work through this. But I'm <laughs> online. To... Online, the contest would would be. Played I don't even care. It just it. It's a running joke that idiots call for phone numbers and stuff. We don't have it. We don't have time. We're working. It's like calling you when you're you're. Hold on. Doing whatever it is that you do. <laughs> And asking you to stop and go look up a phone number. Hello? Russ, are you still having uh, the Jennifer Love on tomorrow? As far as I know, Ronnie. See, Ronnie would get the phone number. Ronnie knows how to get to the point. He makes very few stupid comments. He's a friend of the show. I recognize his voice every time he calls. And I hate that. (laughs) Because <laughs> you can't play no games. <laughs> exactly. Well, you're an effing game pig. Hog. Whatever we call it in the industry. Yeah, that. You go from station to station trying to win contests. No, 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 no. Yes. I don't go to no other station. Man, that's like being getting a bisexual. I knew. <laughs> uh, like I listen to the midday. <laughs> Please. <clears throat> no, but I was wondering, I was looking at her bio last night on the computer. Right. And she has this new project called Marry Me Jane or something. I don't know what that is. Yeah, I know, but you should ask her about it because it's her personal project. And What is it about? It don't say. It just says that she's going to, she's doing this Marry Me Jane kind of thing. That's on her own kind of independent thing. I just thought that uh, if you looked it up tonight, you would be prepared for it tomorrow so you could. Oh, suck up to her. Oh, yeah. yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. Because they got pictures of her. With no shirt on, yeah, and the little bell-bottom pants and the, the, the crack. Thanks, Ronnie. All right. What do we want to do now? It's been about an hour since news, hasn't it? You can certainly do that. Eddie, is the Pope making an appearance today? Yeah. Hmm. Do we have to take a break first? Yeah, we need. To. Okay. <laughs> All right. Quick break. We'll come back. We'll visit with the Pope. Mm. Then we'll do next. Okay. There's our there's our regime for the next ten minutes. <laughs> More of the Russ Martin Show coming right up. I actually got a thank you email. I said, <laughs> Russ was brutal. <laughs> Terrible to you. Yeah, but too. You got an email from Billy D. Lucas? Yeah. But, <laughs> Davis. I well, know, but thanks for getting it on there anyway. Listen, it kickles with anything. Thank you. You were walking around singing it all night last night around his office. Because of this. Yeah, yeah. It's right in there. Hmm. Good Lord. 
want him get a want to get him up here and sing it live. No. Oh yes. No. Yes. Leave the guy alone. What kind of instruments does he have in this? Do you need a guitar and a goat? <laughs> There's a guitar in there. You could probably just do it with a the guitar. There's the drums. I don't hear a steel guitar. There's a bass. Yeah. Is there a steel guitar? Real subtle. What? Steel guitar? Steel guitar. It's a, might, might just be strumming rhythm. Right. It's a steel guitar unless you just pounded it. <laughs> Sing that song, bitch. She wrote, call me. My new favorite song, no. F M and M. Very hard traditional country. I don't care what it is. You like it? That's not. That's that's swinging. <laughs> if you get him up here, he's got to wear like the uh, the you gotta dress sparkly him up like big you know, tax. The, you know the sparkly jacket, you know, with wagon wheels on it. Yeah. Dress him up like uh, uh, cowboy weaver. Yeah. Cowboy weaver or, or Porter Buck. Wagner? Por- oh, Porter Wagner. Yeah, something with glitter on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, fresh fringe and glitter. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And a neckerchief. <laughs> Boots. Yeah. He'll have those. Wranglers. Mm-hmm. Make him walk around standing like this. <laughs> <laughs> the big text thing. Yes. I said. Poor guy. Hey, he sent the CD. He yes, knew he better. Yes, he yeah. did. He certainly did. He even said that in the email. He goes, I knew Russ was going to, if he listened to it, he would destroy it. There's no reason to destroy this song. It's just. He put Pace and behind this. This has got a fuse are already on it. She was. The barnyard mix. It's funny as the wolf's going to start getting requests for this. <laughs> this guy's career is going to zoom. Yeah. What's our number? 214-787-1995. Yeah. What's the guy's name? Which one? I don't know who's on. This this guy that's singing. Oh, Billy oh. Lee Davis. Wish he'd pick a name and stick with it. <laughs> he did. <laughs> Does he have a website? I remember him saying he buy it on Amazon, but I don't think he's got a website himself. And let me see. No, oh, here it is right here. He does. BillyLeeDavis.com. There. Call a wolf and request it. <laughs> They'll have a heart attack. Yeah. Who is it? God, who the people call are calling in? Call the RCA. Call the RCA. Find out who this is. <laughs> label is this on? It's probably independent here locally. It is on... Manufactured by Midwest Disc for Billy Lee Davis. Do you see a label on that? Nope. Look on the CD. That's, it don't matter. It won't be a national label. It won't be a label that the wolf has access to. <laughs> Maybe they can order one off his side. They could do that. Does, does the disc you have have his picture on the cover? Have you seen this guy? Hmm. Yeah. It's on the CD right oh, okay. here. Okay. Yeah. He's your typical redneck AC guy. Yeah. Hat, overpressed uh, shirt, mm-hmm. Wranglers up to the uh, past his belly button. <laughs> Why do they always? What is it with the with the hayseeds that get the shirts that are too big? Because look at that, that's mm-hmm. too big. And any, anytime you go to a redneck kicker bar, they're all wearing the shirts that are too big that are puffy in the back. It's just, it's just is that the, the storage? It's the no <laughs> storage. It's the fashion, and they, they get pressed. They stand out like that because they're. Heavy starch. Well, why heavy starch? Why not just wash it and, you know? It's just a fashion. They press the jeans. Yeah. Like I now, do they still do the uh, the jeans to where they're so pressed you can do the deli meat cut? Yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Got to have that crease. Where they have a big white line right down the front. You're being pressed. And, and what's the, the reason between behind that? It's just the fashion. It's Is just it? they want to look sharp and pressed. Have you seen them, Dan? Oh, yeah. Do they still sew the seam into the front? 
Um, so the cre- have you seen those? No. They, uh, my wife likes the western jeans. Some of the guys' jeans have the seam sewn into the front, so it'll so it'll regardless of what you do, it's always there. It's always going to be sharp, in oh. the, sharp crease in the front. Not never, the seam; the crease is sewn into. Never the front. seen that. No. Mm-hmm. Normally, your extra heavy starch does that in a couple of washings. You get the white line. <laughs> it's just a fashion. I got it. Why I, do why do you know? Like people, it dress. just doesn't make any sense. Why? I mean, you know, why not take all your your either the balloon pants or your, your shirts and cover them with macrame? You know, it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> now you know they're going to do that. So some of the some of the uh, d- tan- dancing teams do have little things sewn on the shirts that match. The, what do they have? Oh, just the sparkles. Macaroni? No, no, no. Ma- <laughs> yeah, the sparkles and things, but they're in the same pattern. They're, they're very expensive. Dancing teams like square dancing. Uh, husband, wife teams, boyfriend, girlfriend, they dress alike and they dance. Oh, together. you mean when they're, lo- you know, like the line dancing, when they're country in, dancing. When they're competing on the, comp- 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 on TNN? Yes. Or it's not Nashville anymore. Is it? I don't know. They do this thing. No, they don't do that. <laughs> With the thumbs in the pants and the arms out. No. And they, they're doing this like I got the diarrhea. No, that's, I gotta get to the bathroom. <laughs> no. I'm not right. gonna, not gonna hold it. <laughs> I'm very intricate dancing, but not much. That's not it. And well, some of it is very complicated. Yeah, it is. Some of it. The, the competitions are. I can Well, they got to be careful because one wrong move, he's going to snap her neck. Oh, I can slice her in half of those effing pants. <laughs> Zero coming. You were doing that all day yesterday after the show, walking around the hall. I love it. <laughs> she will call on me. How could you not love that? You can't. You love it. God, you're on the air. Hey, Russ. Yes. I got a I emailed you with a story on Ludwig. On who? About Ludwig. I didn't get it. Craig, well, I had talked to my uncle about him being in a uh, gay bar. Ludwig? Yeah. He wasn't in no gay bar. I swear. I talked to my uncle last night. He was in, uh, it was at Harley Fest <laughs> in Milwaukee. He met with my uncle. He's good friends with him. Yeah. They uh, traveled. Oh, he met him up the road. Hold on a second. Dan, and, uh, hold on. Dan. Yes, sir. Hunt down the Ludwig, would you? Craig? Okay. Yeah. All right. Go ahead. So, and, uh, now, who saw him in the gay bar? Well, they're walking down the street. They parked and walked down the street, and Ludwig had, had to use the bathroom. So they just dove off in the first bar they seen. All right. So he didn't know it was a gay bar? No. Oh. He went into the bathroom. And this guy's checking him out the whole time he's going to the bathroom. Oh, jeez. <laughs> and my uncle's sitting at the bar drinking a beer thinking, what if we got into? And you know how sensitive Ludwig is. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he told my uncle, man, if he told anybody, he'd kill him. But, uh, so here you are on the radio. <laughs> uh, that's all right. <laughs> what, anyway, was, uh, uh, what city were they in? I believe it was Milwaukee. All right. But, uh... He went back out to the bar, and he said, this guy's checking me out in the bathroom. And there was another guy just winking and smiling at him across the, across the way. And, uh, yeah, he'd be quite a catch <laughs> in a gay bar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, my uncle finally told me, he said, man, this is a gay bar. And, man, they, they were, like, instantly gone out of there. But well, you were, know like, what? Really? Seriously. That, if, is it him? All right, we got to go. Hold on. You got him? Is that him? Yeah, he's on the hot. Craig. Yes, sir. You big bag. <laughs> what were you doing in a gay bar in Wisconsin? A gay... I got to be honest, there aren't any in Wisconsin, so maybe it's a different state, Russ. Wait a minute. Where's Milwaukee? Milwaukee is southern Milwaukee. Yeah, southern Wisconsin. Yes. Were, yeah. you in, were you in a gay bar anytime recently? I was in a strip joint a couple weeks ago. Were you in a gay bar anywhere? No. No. Can't... You, uh, you didn't can't go... Take, can't take credit for that one, right? You didn't accidentally go into a gay bar to use the bathroom. Uh, no, can't take credit for that one. <clears throat> I'd like to help you out, but I can't. <laughs> <laughs> Why were you were you in the stall next to me or what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I kept sticking it through the hole and you wouldn't uh-huh. bite. <laughs> Gee, there you go. I felt jilted. You'd want to quit. I felt jilted. I just kept, you know, sticking it in. I'd pull it out, dress it up, stick it back through the hole. 
Where, where are you getting your info there? Rick? I some I guy you, uh, called and said that you weren't some Harley rally thing in uh, Milwaukee, and you had to go whiz and accidentally ducked into a gay bar. Oh, that wasn't a couple weeks ago. That was about three years ago. Oh, hmm. but you oh. still did it then, right? Oh, sure. Oh, okay. sure. <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> How was it? Uh, I've been there long enough to check it out. Man, you must have been a, the, the literally the cock of the walk. <laughs> when uh, when you, when you walk in and you see them all holding hands in there, I just kind of uh, spun around and headed the other way. <laughs> you could have sat down and you could have had dr free drinks all night. <laughs> <laughs> no, I pass on that, Russ. Russ, what? The the guy is still on line five. He said it wasn't recent. It was a few years ago. Yeah, Craig just said. That. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah it's two years ago. Yeah, I think it was at the seventy fifth anniversary, as a matter of fact, the uh, 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 the Harley thing, and or the ninety fifth or something like that. Yeah, it must have been ninety fifth because hundred uh, hundred anniversaries coming, coming up, up next. Right. Yeah. So yeah, it was the ninety fifth then. Yeah. <sighs> Actually, that's where all my buddies live in Milwaukee too. So. Yeah. I'll, I'll, they're coming in next weekend, so I'll see if any of them are fags or not. So <laughs> I'll check it out for you. If there are, I'll, I'll get, have them give you a call. Do you still have your bike? Yes, sir. I got a Harley now. We need to go ride. Well, <laughs> I don't know, Russ. Why? I, I just can't picture you riding around on a bike. Uh, we rode uh, for your uh, charity turkey thing a couple of years ago. Yeah, you were the one way back there, weren't you? I know. I stayed up, and I didn't drop it. Uh-huh. Yeah, but I, I I just can't picture you on that. But I'd, I'd love to go for a ride with the rest if you want to. You want to learn how to ride? Uh, okay, I've been riding yeah. for a couple. Of years. I got a couple spots we can stop and check out parts and pieces and things. Okay, make sure everything's running okay with you. What are you doing now with it? Uh, are you are you doing anything for the stars now? Yeah, I'm going to go in. As a matter of fact, we're going to get something done next week. What are you going to uh, do? Uh, what I'd like to do is uh, I would like to work with our young kids, um, our draft picks, kids that we've just drafted, and be able to uh, go and watch them play and be able to talk to them a little bit after after I watch them play for a few games and give them a couple little points or direction that they need to do that's going to get them here and that's going to keep them here because I just have felt over the last few years uh, our, our, our upbringing of our youth hasn't really helped us that much in the past. It seems like we've always got to go out and... Uh, our owner and everybody has to spend a lot of money on uh, free agents, you know, every summer. And so, uh, in the past, that I've noticed when I was in Montreal, we there was a lot of time and effort and work put into the into the young kids in the program that were coming. Dan, up you want to ask him to play in your golf thing? And, uh, uh, like us, we can, uh, if he's in town, the next one. I'm not sure where the next one's going to be. We need to spend yeah. a little more time, yeah. a little more uh, put some more effort into those kids uh, when they they are. You're too older that they can get here and they can stay here, so we don't have to lose them. And, mm -hmm. and hopefully, you don't got to go out and spend sixty million dollars every summer like uh, like we do. But it's a luxury that we have. But I think we need. Is that to, what it costs uh, for recruitment? Well, I mean, if you look at it, when they, you know, just for example, I mean, you look at uh, Bill Guerin's contract. I think he got somewhere around nine million for four or five years, and then they went and got uh, Scott Young at uh, two or three years at three and a half million, and. Uh, you know, and along with a couple more guys, you got to, you know, you figure that that's not that's not what they're spending per year, but that's what they're spending over the length of their contracts. So, you know, if you if you put some more time and effort into, uh, I'd be more apt to give hockey players that kind of money because they get out there and they get their asses whooped, and they very seldom yeah. complain, and I don't know why. Well, I you know I think it's the way that that hockey players are brought up. I think you're you're brought up with the idea that you don't you don't get hurt because when you're hurt. Uh, you have to miss a game, and when you miss a game, there's somebody standing right behind you in line that wants to get in and take your spot. So it's, it's, not, it's not being courageous, it's being paranoid. Well, it's, it's, I think it's a little bit of both. I, think I just always thought it was like a love for the game. You went out there, and I mean, there were there were seasons uh, when you guys were playing, I don't know who it was, but he got hurt, and you had, the bone was actually sticking out of his leg, and he was still on the ice. I think he used well, it as a I mean, stick. I, I, like, <laughs> like, I don't know if it was sticking out of his leg or where it was sticking out of it. You know, you know. You spent too much time I don't know. Bar. I think it's just a perception that uh, a hockey player has. And, you know, I think if you probably talk to other athletes, they'll probably tell you that, uh, you know, they feel the same way about their sports. So I can only speak for ours, and I know that. Uh, it just seems to be kind of, it, it's more of a, a, when you use the word team, it's it's a team sport. There's not, you never very seldom see any showboating, and if somebody scores, 
you know, th- it's like when Craig accidentally scored uh, in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. <laughs> First of all, the look on his face. <laughs> and then they, that went in. They, they interviewed him later, and he gave credit to somebody else. Yeah. Well, it wasn't me. Because, you know, I, I think that's probably another thing that any kind of athlete that you talk to in our sport, I mean, even when you talk to a guy like Mike Madonna or – uh, a player, Darian Hatcher, guys like that, they'll be the first ones to give credit to their line mates. And I think it's just, a, like you said, it, it is a team. And I think we've all... I have a guest question for you. Uh, let me grab this guy on four and then you can do it. Go ahead, Dan. Hey, Russ. Hey, I'm not trying to make light of this cat situation, but mm-hmm. would it be such a big deal if it were a rat or a squirrel or a ferret or something? Yes. It would be just as big of a deal? You're missing the point. What's the point? You're torturing an animal for enjoyment. But I just find it hard to I believe just explained it to you. Well, if it was a we're rat. We're clear, right? I, I just taught you something. Oh, you You're did. welcome. You're right. Fine. Dumbass question. I don't care what it is. Really? The only two things I don't care what you do with are bugs and X's. I don't care. <laughs> There's got to be something wrong in your brain if you think it's okay to torture any animal. I didn't even like it when I was a kid. My brother would do stuff with frogs. It's just it's just one of those things. I mean, if you're going to kill it and eat it, that's fine. You're doing it for a reason. But to whack something around just for the sheer enjoyment, that's sick. And the fact that you have to call an ass that makes you a jackass. What kind of question was that? I don't, I don't know. All right, who's the guest? Uh, Def Leppard will be in town next week. I think Wednesday. They're going to be at the Hard Rock promoting some new stuff. So they're going to be in town. They could be in studio. I thought they were mad at me. Oh, they probably don't remember that. They remembered it enough to call in bitch last time. Yeah, but we're at a different station now. They're not going to remember anything about the one-armed drummer jokes or anything. I didn't make any one-armed Actually, drummer didn't, jokes. Didn't make any jokes. I forget. Right. Hold on. What were they pissed about? We were promoting their. Uh, I was playing their new album. We were over at the Eagle. Mm-hmm. I forget the name of the album. I think it's Euphoria or something like that. I could be wrong. It was a good album. I you would, I would sit at the computer, and I very seldom do this. I find one one or two songs on an album, and that's it. I couldn't mm-hmm. care less about the other tracks. I'd sit at the computer and just let the whole thing track while I was working. I don't think I kissed their ass. That's what it was. I don't know. We didn't make any one art. That's too easy. Yeah. Hmm. Mm. All I remember is Greg called us in after the show. Well, you upset Def Leppard. And? <laughs> <laughs> What's going to happen now? Well, it was up to you. What did I say? Uh, they didn't really say. All right, but they were mad. Yes. Did you hear anything I said? No. Is John De La Rosa in here someplace? <laughs> I remember we sat around afterwards trying to figure out what it could have been we, that, that happened that made them angry. But I'm still trying to think. It wasn't the album because I didn't bag on that. Mm. All right, Def Leppard in the studio. Are they going to play? I don't know. They can do acoustic. I heard one of their acoustic things. But they do. I think they did a whole acoustic, like an unplugged, I'm not sure, but I think it was an unplugged thing for MTV. I heard a version of uh, Pour Some Sugar on Me. It's cool. Yes, if they'll play acoustically, they can come in. Okay. If not, I'm busy. <laughs> okay. What's the deal on uh, Jennifer Love Hewitt? She's calling tomorrow or not? Uh, is the, at this point... It's going to be sometime between 3.30 and 4 o'clock tomorrow. That's fine. It just depends on what time she gets done with the MTV thing. She's do, uh, recording a segment with them. And then when she's done with that, she'll be in the limo. And as soon as she gets in the limo, she's supposed to call. Well, fine. They're the ones that called us. I didn't ask to have her on. Mm-hmm. Well, but she does have, you know, the obligation that she has to fulfill at MTV and all that. So. Okay. 
Screw it. We can't get her. We got this in the back. Uh, we got this in our back pocket. Yeah. She wrote, call <laughs> me. I think he's available. You know this uh, Harley Lee Davidson guy can come up and sing whatever. Billy Lee Davis. He riddles all through this thing, doesn't he? Yeah. I like this song, and I don't know why. I'm ashamed to embarrass. Uh, I'm embarrassed to admit it. I'm ashamed. I was singing it out in the hall during one of the breaks. She will call me. Yeah, we know. You know what that is? Uh uh. It's a hit. I was going to say mosquito repellent, but okay. <laughs> but okay. Go ahead, you're on the air. Make it stop. Turn it off. Oh, no. No, no, no. Do that, did you, sir? No Hello. Hey. Yeah. Why? Oh, what's up with Howard Stern and the rerun? I don't know. Why don't you call him? I can't get a hold of him. What's the number? I don't know. Why don't you call him? I don't know the number. That's why I'm what calling What did information you. tell you when you asked them? Huh? That's what I thought. <laughs> I've been screening most of those. <laughs> why do they... All right. Jackasses. Dildos. Dumbass. This is not information. If you can't figure it out on your own, don't call Dan and waste his time. Open up a phone book. Break down. Call 411. Ask them. Call Bob McNeil. 972-716-7800. It'll forward to his office. We don't know. And better yet, we don't care. And this continues every single day, doesn't it? Yes. Hundreds and hundreds of them every day. Calls about other shows on the station. Ads they've heard don't ask station. about other shows on this station. Don't even ask about this show on this station. If you don't like another show, don't worry about it. It'll probably be gone. It's about time for changing of the tards. <laughs> Thank you. Good night. Uh-huh. <laughs> I have no power here. I can do nothing. I know absolutely nothing. I have no information that's valuable to you in any form or fashion. Never, ever, ever call us. If it continues, I'll have these phone lines taken out. <laughs> Russ, this is a talk show, man. We're supposed to talk to him from time to time. Okay. <laughs> yes, what is it? <laughs> Someone needs to ask you what the number to Domino's is. Why? Uh, because Russ probably knows. Nobody say anything. I mean it. We're getting an unlisted phone number. <laughs> we'll just talk to the ones that get in by luck. Friends we, we that have, we give the number to? We have the phone number changed, and we only give it out to people that go through some type of IQ test. <laughs> you have to take some kind of test. Or you win in a contest. <laughs> you win the phone number. And then you can call. Well, no. they have to have the phone number first. Yeah, yeah how would they win the contest? I don't know. I'll work through this. But I'm <laughs> Online, to- online, the contest would... Would be I don't even care. It just it it's a running joke that idiots call for phone numbers and stuff. We don't have it. We don't have time. We're working. It's like calling you when you're you're Hold on. doing whatever it is that you do <laughs> and asking you to stop and go look up a phone number. Hello. Russ, are you still having uh, the Jennifer Love on tomorrow? As far as I know, Ronnie. See, Ronnie would get the phone number. Right. Ronnie knows how to get to the point. 
He makes very few stupid comments. He's a friend of the show. I recognize his voice every time he calls. And I hate that. Because <laughs> he can't play no games. <laughs> exactly. Well, you're an effing game pig. Hog. Whatever we call it in the industry. Yeah, that. You go from station to station trying to win contests. No, 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 no. Yes. I don't go to no other station. Man, that's like being getting a bisexual. I knew. <laughs> uh, like I listen to the midday. <laughs> Please. <clears throat> no, but I was wondering, I was looking at her bio last night on the computer. Right. And she has this new project called Marry Me Jane or something. I don't know what that is. Yeah, I know. But you should ask her about it because it's her personal project. And What is it about? It don't say. It just says that she's going to, she's doing this Marry Me Jane kind of thing. That's on her own kind of independent thing. I just thought that uh, if you looked it up tonight, you would be prepared for it tomorrow so you could. Oh, suck up to her. Oh, yeah. yes. Oh, yes. Because they got pictures of her. With no shirt on. Yeah. And the little bell-bottom pants and the, the, the crack. Thanks, Ronnie. All right. What do we want to do now? Hmm. Been about an hour since news, hasn't it? You can certainly do that. Eddie, is the Pope making an appearance today? He can. Hmm. Do we have to take a break first? Yeah, we need to. Okay. <laughs> All right. Quick break. We'll come back. We'll visit with the Pope. Mm. Then we'll do next. Okay. There's our there's our regime for the next ten minutes. <laughs> More of the Russ Martin Show coming right up. Five thirty-two. Let's go ahead and do news first before we drag the Pope in here. Okay. Anybody pissed off at us? No, I was checking with him to see, make sure he kind of looked mad at first. Yeah. And he didn't jump at all. He, he looked right at me and he goes, "I listen to the show every day." Oh. Now, if one of my own jocks came in with a gun, I'd be scared because <laughs> I don't know what they're doing. <laughs> They're just not used to this at a music station. What, guns? Just hijinks and silliness. Antics. Antics. Because you know what we are? Mm -hmm. What are we? Zany. Ooh. Yeah. That's how you get to be number one. You're zany. All right, you ready to go with news? Sure. Yeah, that is. All right, 533, J.D. Ryan's on the new 105.3 FM Talk with news. Thank you, Ross. News brought to us by Southwestern Bell and by Nordstrom's. FBI counterterrorism chief Dale Watson said today he believes Osama bin Laden is dead. The first time a senior U.S. law enforcement official publicly has given an opinion on the al-Qaeda leader's status. Watson quickly emphasized he has no evidence to the suspected mastermind of the September 11th attack. He has no proof that he's dead, but he just thinks he is. Watson also said bin Laden in, quote, there is no question in my mind we will be attacked again. Uh... See, emergency rooms and doctors across Dallas County have been put on alert for human cases of the West Nile virus. If any residents do become infected, mosquito control programs will be stepped up even more. Cities across the Metroplex have already gotten more aggressive with mosquito control, spraying insecticides for adult mosquitoes, killing their larvae, and putting uh, out mosquito traps. Actually, it uh, is possible that residents could get the virus without knowing it. Because it's a mild virus, most people would have very few or no symptoms. However, the elderly and others with weakened immune systems are particularly vulnerable. If infected, they would likely experience fever, headache, skin rash, or disorientation. I'm telling you, every time I see one of those trucks spraying for mosquitoes, <laughs> you're just thinking, if you just put in a few gallons of spermicide or something to sterilize people. You remember the old days when they sprayed by with crop dusters over no. the top of the city? I just remember the trucks. Yeah, great big yeah. huge truck. Uh, not like what they have now. They're because the now the ones now are just like little bitty pipes out the back of a truck that kind of go back and forth, right? Mm -hmm. Right. The ones I remember as a kid, huge. If I remember, they were like huge, look like jet engines on the back of a truck. Big foggers, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Those were always cool. We got my dad would tell, "Go, why don't you go play in the mist?" <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Maybe they just use the planes in North Dallas. And <laughs> use the foggers and Pleasant Grove. That's what we got in Pleasant Grove. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, speaking of bugs, the uh, their numbers swelled by the drought. Grasshoppers and Mormon, uh, Mormon crickets are ravaging crops. Little crickets on bicycles. <laughs> Are ravaging crops and pastures across the West and what could be the biggest infestation <laughs> since World War II. They're even eating paint off of some houses, according to these farmers. Mormons will do that. Yeah, they're, they're, <laughs> the infestation threatens the livelihood of farmers and ranchers already suffering because of the dry spell. Uh, last year, grasshoppers and Mormon crickets, a black wingless cousin of the grasshopper, caused $25 million in crop damage in the U.S. alone. So we got... What are they called? Mosquitoes. Mosquitoes. With the West Nile virus. We have grasshoppers, mm-hmm. and somewhere else they've got the locusts. Yeah, he's right. End of the world. <laughs> Dennis McGraw, brother brother of baseball star Tug McGraw, and uncle of country singer Tim McGraw, has been charged with murder of a neighbor. Authorities are still unclear about the motive for the shooting or the relationship between the two. Spokesman for Tim McGraw's Nashville office was not immediate, would not return phone calls immediately. What does it take to satisfy a man in bed? Aggressiveness, according to a new sex survey by Cosmopolitan magazine. I don't like that. Aggressiveness? Uh-uh. I like him to participate. I'm not big on the chick starting initiating. You don't want her to initiate, and you don't like it when they talk. Either. Oh, absolutely not, especially with L.A. Oh. And the things that she says. And if you laugh, she gets really pissed. <laughs> She's putting out her best porn star stuff, and you're laughing. <laughs> well, it was fun. It's like I what, hate you it. just want sex to be totally silent and compliant? I, I like uh-huhs and mm and yeah, but I don't like conversation. We're not there to talk. You like loud grooming? Running's fine. Like, oh, oh. That kind of stuff. For not really loud. I used to date a chick one time. I have to put a pillow over her face because she got too loud. <laughs> Are you sure that's why you put the pillow on her face? Double burp. I see. I was. I used to have to take her and, and bang her in the closets. Oh, my Lord. Because she just got too loud. I mean, it was loud. It had nothing to do with me because. Were you just afraid the neighbors would hear? Or? It was loud. I mean, loud. Like, I'm killing her loud. <laughs> loud. And you just look at her right in the middle, and she just starts going, ah! and you start laughing. <laughs> yeah, I like the light groaning. In the- and it had nothing to do with me because she, uh, she used to do the same thing with her uh, previous boyfriend. I, I, I have to explain now. This is the chick that I was, uh, it was my current girlfriend's roommate. Oh, that one. Yeah. And my current girlfriend would say, I can hear blah, 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 and her boyfriend in the other room oh. having sex all the time, and she's oh. loud. So finally, when I got around to banging her. <laughs> well, you're still dating the roommate. Yeah. The other one. I'm going, wow, that was right. <laughs> oops. Oops. <laughs> She was loud. I had to find a closet in the innermost part of the apartment. <laughs> I'm assuming they weren't still roommates at this point. <laughs> Jesus. Where was the other one? Uh-huh. <laughs> Softball practice. I see. Oh, my God. What? I just, that's dangerous. Get between two chicks. I remember the New Year's Eve party when they were both there. Who's he going to kiss at midnight? <laughs> I did them both. <gasps> did Not at midnight. Oh. I did the girlfriend, girlfriend at midnight. Uh-huh. Yeah. And when the mistress left, yes. I walked her out to her car. <laughs> I'm going to walk her out to her car because it's late. A dark party. Yeah. 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 Be a good guy. Yeah. <laughs> that was he so thoughtful to all my friends. <laughs> yes. Especially the ones he's banging. Uh, the mag says thousands of guys have put their sexual preferences and they ask rather, and whopping 78% say they'd rather the female make the first move. Mm hmm. What about music? You like music? Yeah. I like it. It depends on the, the mood. Music and candles and stuff. Yeah. Or just quick. Right. <laughs> you know. Well, they have music for the quick poke and the whiskers. They do? She will oh. call <laughs> me. I mean, look at it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, turn around and smack her there. I thought she was a All right, I can't keep the rhythm. Okay. We're good, though. 
Okay. Uh, let me see what else they said. 54% said they, um, they say wearing revealing clothes is sexiest, uh, the sexiest non-physical way for a gal to turn them on. 2% said they got hot when a woman complimented their bodies. When asked what's the best way a woman can show that she wants to sleep with you, 40%. I said, blurting out, sleep with me is the best. 20% said uh, a guy would prefer a guy just to reach down and touch his. I love that. That's my favorite thing. Yeah. Especially after making out on, like, the couch for a while or in the car. Yeah. And they reach down and they set it, they let it loose. Uh-huh. <laughs> it is. That's just because it's been bound up for, you know, probably hours. Hot and sweaty. And then all of a sudden, you know, it's just that feeling of air hitting it from all different directions. <sighs> Oh. You know, if she reaches over and grab it, you know what's coming. You know. Yeah, they set it free. Mm-hmm. Let the monster and let the monster out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and finally, almost half of guys prefer sex. Just touch it. How many times you were saying oh, yeah. that? Just touch it. Just touch monster. it a little. And you're ramming their face. <laughs> Did you get for letting it out? It's been college since I used it. I'll just put it in for a second. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it worked. <laughs> yeah, because once, you, once you're in, yeah. they take a rat's ass. <laughs> <No. laughs> okay, but just for a second, right? Okay. Yeah. That makes sure that I'm talking slut and you win. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Half of you guys like the chick on top. 28% like doggy style. 13% uh, just like the missionary position. It's coming up next month in Cosmo. That's what L.A. was doing when she... I almost wish you guys could have been there, but that would be clear. Yeah. <laughs> Got a video or something. When she, when she, oh, I got plenty of still pictures. I just tons. Because she would pose over and over doing different stuff while I was taking pictures. She goes, wait, wait. I want to get spit hanging from it. Okay. <laughs> Did you get it that time? Uh-uh. Have to do it again. Have to take it again. Maybe you ain't got no spit. <laughs> spit on it. <laughs> All right, here we go. I missed it. <laughs> Lick it off, start again. <laughs> what do you have a ton of pictures? And she, and the, the, she was going like, she was sitting on top like this. Mm-hmm. Going, uh, 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 back and forth. Uh, yeah, and then that's when she blurted out the, <laughs> my nasty. <laughs> and that's when I started laughing. <laughs> yeah. She actually got pissed. And I mean quick. I mean, she got that look on her face. She was like, ah, ah. <laughs> that's actually that scared me. That's her, probably her big closer horn line, you know? Yeah. And she's got tight, tight, or strong kegels. Because as things finished, right, and everything, you know, was mm-hmm. contracted, I didn't even have to hit her in the head. <laughs> <laughs> as I'm dismounting, right. yes. condom came off. Ooh. She's still had a whole lot of stay. That's a grip. Yeah. I've never seen I that. think what she did is she took those little daisies that you put on your bathtubs. Uh-huh. Stuck them inside. <laughs> That's what I think. Yeah, I got you. Probably so. I've never seen one of her videos yet. Yeah. I got a bunch of DVDs at home. Bring one. If you don't mind me looking at your girlfriend. I should. <laughs> no, I don't mind. Okay, as you probably heard, lots of rumors all over the place about Michael Jackson finally tapped out financially. He owes Sony something like $200 million. Well, maybe it's, he could have saved some money over the years with his trademark white, glo- white gloves. Apparently, Michael never uses the same ones twice. He says, quote, I never, DNA. I never reuse the gloves that I wear during my performance. Each glove belongs to that unique moment. Net. Mm-hmm. Also, uh, if you want to go to foxnews.com, you can hear part of his song, what More Can I Give, the Michael Jackson charity song, which was shelved after Michael's people learned that it had been produced by a gay porno director. And Fox, Duh. Fox News has got it. Do you have the audio? I do not. No. Why don't you have audio yet? We've been here for three weeks. I have some audio. I just don't have that audio because I can't download that audio. I'm getting a new computer tomorrow. Why can't you download it? it can you not download stuff in your office? No. I'm going to I'm gonna. Eddie, it. can you download stuff in your office? Yes. Well, how come Eddie can and you can't? I... I I just don't have it set up that way yet. I'm going to get it that way. We're getting, I'm getting a new, new well, computer Well, what are tomorrow. we waiting on? We're doing the show every day. New computer tomorrow. I got audio today. Well, how are you getting audio now? Now, I'm using this room as a production room. Well, because we're not in here. Before, I couldn't do that because the other show was in here. So I had a separate production room. Well, they haven't put the production room Yeah, in but we've here. always had this studio with two mini-disc players in here, and one's a recorder. Why couldn't you come in here? Wait a minute. So you're getting the audio, but we're not playing it once. I just didn't know this room was a production room. The audio comes to you how? 
a little mini disc. Okay, so you had the audio. It comes at 5 o'clock in the morning, yes. Okay, and we haven't been playing that line. Because I haven't been able to. It comes in one cut, so you get like 30 cuts, and you don't want to hear all 30 cuts. All right, why couldn't you come in here and take the player and dub off onto the recorder just the cuts that you wanted? Didn't think of that. Didn't occur to me. Well, I don't stand over there. I don't know what all you have. Well, you know we had a mini disc recorder. Yeah, I know. Because you see Eddie take the show sometimes. I didn't see it too. But okay, now I did. That's what I did today. Oh. <sighs> it's just growing pains. I don't know what all. It's not growing pains. It's me squirting my own hair. Know that? I used to work in a production room where you can put it down, edit it out. All right, what audio do we have on here then? Stuart Little 2 opens in theaters this Friday in this cut. And, uh, in the cut number one, Gina Davis was asked if she's willing to do even more Stuart Little sequels. I don't hear nothing. Cut one. I'm working on it. I'm there, you know. I'm I'm his mom. He needs me. He's just little, so <laughs> I better be there for him. You know, it's as, as long as the quality uh, stays consistent like it, like it is, um, I'm, I'm happy to be part of it. June Davis also talked on cut number two, the challenge of working with an actual two-year-old on the set of Stuart Little. Two. The challenge of having a two-year-old look at an invisible mouse and, you know, and be in this world. She doesn't know we're making a movie. She doesn't know anything. Why she's not with mommy. It was just unbelievable. And you couldn't hand her so off. So basically you're torturing kids for no reason. Get for get you know, well, for profit. Yeah. 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 So the, the kids, they, if, if they're not getting anything out of it, why are they there? The parents so are getting the cash. Yeah. For like four hour chunks and lugging around this huge toddler and stuff. And then be like, okay, look here, look here, look here. Is she looking? Is she like, look, 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 it's here. And there's just nothing there. You know, look, look. There. She kind of looks. And then, now okay, the kids go, I'm not that with tumor because I don't see them. <laughs> then they see the movie and they go, that wasn't there. <laughs> Mommy, I'm scared. I swear that wasn't there. Uh, let's see what else is opening up. Oh, K-19, The Widowmaker is opening up this weekend. The what? The Widowmaker. K-19, The Widowmaker. Who's in that? Harrison Ford. Oh. Um, it's got Harrison Ford on the liberties taken with the story of the Russian sub and its crew in K-19. The character that I play... Uh, does not represent the reality of the, re of the captain of the ship, but is uh, a creation to help tell the story of different theories of military command. The contest. Is it right he's doing Callista Flockhart now? Uh, yeah, I've yeah. Uh, uh, heard. Yeah, uh, said uh, devoted to the interests of his men and my captain, who believes. And I mean, ooh, ooh for him. Yeah, ooh for both of them. Is a I mean, he's still okay looking guy. Invention. You know, obviously keeps himself in shape, but she's, but I, she's a stick. Yeah. She's gross. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe he likes thin girls. What was he, who was he married to before? I don't know. It was a long time wife. Do you know Eddie? Uh, yeah, I'm trying to remember her name. She was a playwright. Oh, so nobody's Somebody he knew from 20 years ago. Oh. All right. And finally, Harrison Ford on what he wanted to tell the real-life crew of his Russian submarine portrayed in K-19. What I felt was the important thing to do was to reassure them that we weren't there to denigrate their contribution. We weren't there to poke fun at Russians. We weren't adopting an American jingoistic point of view to tell the story of a Russian failure. But we were actually involved in trying to tell their story and the story of the... Do you have any audio from the new Clint Eastwood movie? Mm-mm. Get some. Get some. And bring it to yeah. a broad audience. Because it looks like it's going to be... I don't think it's a dirty, hairy movie, but that's what it looks like. I've seen the, seen the little trailers. I'm going to get... I'm going to basically make a studio at home. I'm giving up on them doing one up here. I, mean, I was talking to Dan earlier about what audio card to get from my computer at home to be able to just mix stuff and do everything at home. What are you gonna like a sound blaster? Yeah, yeah just a Creative Lab sound blaster, the one of five point ones, and you can. Uncle Buff Rise, if we get it to see it, I just make it at home. I have a studio at home and just have everything ready before I get here. And how are you gonna get the audio? That's this is the only audio because this comes from Westwood One. This is the only audio I can't do at home, and I can uh. do this up here now uh. in the studio uh. right before the show. Uh. All right. Okay. News and information brought to us by Southwestern Bell and Nordstrom's and the folks at Bell Bottom. See you there Saturday night for the party, 10 until midnight, Grapevine Highway at Harwood. I'll have tickets for Rush at the Smirnoff Music Center, August 19th. I'm J.D. Ryan on the talk that rocks Texas, the new 105.3 FM talk. More of the Russ Martin Show coming right up. All right, 
Let's do another check on traffic. Jonathan Dodge at Patrols of the New. 105.3 FM Talks. White Lightning. Live by your outlet report. Brought to you by your Metroplex Chrysler dealers. And by Singular Wireless. In Dallas, eastbound, 920 just after Highway 310. Accident block in the left lane. I'm going to have to go through a bunch of these. I'm going to go really fast. Is of the winter. Lots of accidents. Westbound. 635 LBJ Miller. Two right lanes. Lots of multi vehicle accident. Back up to Kingsley. All looker delays. Northbound. 935 on the service road at Beltline. Overturn. 18 winter block in the service road. Causing heavy onlooker delays. In the colony. Northbound. Highway 121. At Main Street. Accident. Left lane. Block. Eastbound. 635 at Forest. Accident. Southbound. 935 just after Walnut Hill. Accident. Block. Blocking this inner lane, very heavy delay. It's Sunnyvale, westbound, 80, just had lost accident, now it's immediate, all over delay. Westbound, 930, the Tom Landry, at Beckley, accident block in the left lane. Northbound, Dallas Door Tollway at 635, accident off to the right shoulder. Onlookers causing a slowdown. Southbound, Dallas Door Tollway just after 635, accident on the shoulder. Quit playing that damn stupid country crap in my ear. What a stupid, you hear me? People are trying to get home and you're causing problems. What is your mind doing? Arlington, northbound, 360 Division Street. There's an accident block in the right lane, causing the back up to Park Row. And finally, westbound, 114 to John Carpenter. God dang it, I'm going to come down there, and I'm going to throw you in the rotors. Westbound, 114, John Carpenter. <laughs> Maine has got an accident there. That was blocking the left lane. This report brought to you by Randall No. And... This report is a service of the Texas Lottery. You're looking for the best scratch game excitement? Play best of seven with seven ways to win. It's the ultimate sponsor of the Texas Lottery. You're going to win up to $70,000. Play best of seven today. That's driving on John and the Dodge. And the new 1053. I'm going to start singing if you don't stop. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, Bye. Right, Jonathan, all right. Best. Yeah, the weather he's talking about is uh, the next raid, uh, next red radar show and stuff. Moving into the Arlington area, also uh, West Fort Worth is going to get in about 45 minutes. It's going to get a major storm coming through. And the rest of it's moving off northeast of Allen. Um, isolated thunderstorms this evening, 73 for the overnight low. Same thing for tomorrow, 93 for the high word, 94 degrees currently. At the Talk That Rocks, Texas, the new 105.3 FM Talk. What day was it Def Leppard wanted to come up? Uh, Wednesday. Mm. They can come up and hang out for a while. I want them to play. Uh, that's probably going to happen. I'm, I'm making sure. Okay. And they could do it acoustically. That's fine. Yeah. Because sure. originally somebody said acoustic, and I thought, Def Leppard? Yeah. It'd be like ACDC playing, yeah. which doesn't even make sense. No. Then uh, Chloe gave me this. Where does it come up? Right here. Actually, now I kind of like this better than the uh, plugged version. Wait, it kicks in here in a second. Let's go. Every chick in that audience, she's just flowing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Even for that drummer with the, the one arm. Yep. It just makes you want to be a rock It's just, I know. You just taste being a rock star, playing a guitar in front of chicks, and being able to sing and, and yeah. stuff. Chicks like that one from Hawaiian Tropic would just be all over you. Yeah. You wouldn't have to ask. You'd be like, you wouldn't even have to talk to him. You just yeah. get up there and you, you wail on that thing like it's an extension of your penis. <laughs> yeah, they could do this one. 
The only thing it's missing is a steel guitar. <laughs> <laughs> what is it with the steel guitar? I don't know. Crazy. My dad, I'll tell you exactly. Oh. I'll tell you what it is. My dad tried to get me to learn how to play the steel guitar when I was a kid. They forced everything that was country all over me when I was a kid, and that's why I hate it. Yeah, my dad tried to teach me to play guitar. I couldn't. I just can't. There's there's something about the guitar that just completely escapes me. I took lessons when I was 10. For a steel guitar? No. Oh, no. My dad had one and tried to force it on me. He goes, look, it's easy. You can sit down when you play it. You get this bar to go down here, yep. and you strum down here, and you move the bar. And there you go. <laughs> now, I took regular guitar lessons for about six months. I even won, uh, uh, what do they call it when you go play? And for with a bunch of other students? A, a recital? Yes, yeah. Oh, okay. I, I thought you said you won something. I didn't. Oh, you- I- yeah, I got a, a little trophy for a recital, hmm. but that's all I could. St- I couldn't. I couldn't stick with it. That's why I can barely play the stuff that Everett teaches me. You can hear just at the beginning of that song where they all kick in. You know every vagina in there, which is blowing. Yeah, they could do this one. What else do I want them to do? I got so many of them. What are you shaking your head about? People are calling me asking me for spellings of things now. Like what? How to spell your name, for one. One guy is called twice. Because <laughs> he can't... I can't... I must be spelled wrong, I. Eh? How do you spell Russ Martin? I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. They can't bring up your website. They're trying to bring up RussMartin.com, and they can't spell Russ Martin. You didn't tell him, did you? <laughs> well, yeah, it's it's easier. <laughs> Sometimes if I'm in a mood, I'll mess with them, but just not today. <laughs> I don't get it. Where are you going, Eddie? We're about to do the Pope. I just thought of two more. I'm going to go do them. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to them. Hot, wet, firm chicks. Ready to have sex. Yeah. 